Really looking forward to um, being here this morning. I've I've not done this kind of um, recorded presentation in an online classroom before, and so the technology, which you're probably all um, used to, is kind of new and exciting for me. Um, which is isn't to say that I'm um, technology uh, technology luddard. I do lots of online teaching, in fact, in the area of creative writing. So. Um, I'm in the Department of English here at Macquarie and we have a creative writing program that um, starts with um, undergrad students. They can do a writing major um, and goes all the way through um, to masters, to PhD. Students, some students make it their um, major area of study in their Bachelor of Arts degree and some students just do uh, creative writing to supplement another area that they're focused on in their degree. So I might have students in my class who are doing law arts, psychology arts, uh, media arts, um, commerce arts. So uh, I've done lots of, of teaching and when you're asked to do a presentation like this it's kind of hard because you have so much you want to share. and but really in 30 minutes all I can do is share just a tiny little bit um, uh, of, of what, I, what I do. So kind of what I'm um, talking about today is exactly the kinds of things that I talk about with my students, um, undergraduate and postgraduate. But of course at uni we go into more depth. Um, so what we're going to cover today is looking at some practical ways into writing creatively. Um, and I want to start with the question of who you is because you're the ones having to do the writing. And, um, and some of you will be enjoying writing and doing your own creative writing because you're passionate about it. About it. And some of you will be um, perhaps a little bit more reluctant and having to do it because it's part of your English syllabus. Either way, um, the kind of materials and ideas that I'm talking about today are going to assist you. Um, now, just right, I have some resources right at the end, just a few very carefully selected resources that um, your library, your school library might want to look into getting. But one of them is the image on the slide you're looking at now. And it's this great journal called VoiceWorks. You can, it's got a website or you can buy printed copies and it's devoted to writing by young Australians. So under the age of 25, there are heaps of school students who contribute to it. And I've noticed that recently they've, they've also got a, a weekly writing workshop. So you might want to dip into that. Um, during um, your studies to get some inspiration and assistance. So in your creative writing um, you've got to come up with the ideas and there's a truism that people that you'll have heard which is write what you know. So some people say write what you know um, but others will say um, don't just write about yourself, you know, be inventive. That's what writers do. And there's another truism uh, which says you can't write until you've lived, uh, which can be quite challenging for the younger writer because they don't feel like um, they've done that much yet. You haven't been to war, we hope. Um, you haven't had children of your own. You haven't worked for big business or hacked through a major um, corporation security walls, so kind of like what have you done. And I found this great pic of some Adelaide kids who managed to set themselves alight while doing a bike stunt. So most of you won't have done anything like that either. So okay, so who is you and what, what is it that you've, that you've lived that could contribute to your writing? So one way to think about it is to think of yourself as being made up of many selves. You're the person you once were, you're the person you try to be, have tried to be, you're the person you dread becoming, 
or fear that you might be. You're a person who listens, you see, you remember, you invent. And so that idea of yourself can be contradictory and paradoxical, which is exactly what you need for writing. You can use all these different selves uh, to help you with being creative. You draw on them, your past, your present, and your future ideas of yourself to get ideas for your writing. It's important to know things to be able to write. And yet again, as young writers, you have, can have that idea of what do I know? Uh, you know, what I know, uh, what I've learned at school isn't always all that exciting. What else do I know? And yet, you know so much. For instance, you know about feelings. And it, we know these things through minor um, or major events in our lives. For instance, a minor thing. My brothers, when they were younger, used to go down to this local golf course and steal the golf balls at night. And it was exciting, it was transgressive, it was kind of scary, it was fun. They love talking about it now, they think it's very funny. And if I was the writer and it had been my experience, and I don't know why I never went down with them, I was probably too goody two-shoes, uh, I could draw on that experience of having nicked golf balls as a guide for how to feel, how to convey or get tap into fear and excitement. So you can do a kind of writing exercise if you wanted to or talk with, with in your class about other examples like that based on your own life or the lives of people close to you. The reason you might do this is that you can use empathy based on your own experience and you can give, by having empathy, by um, uh, remembering those feelings and seeing that they can be analogous in another setting, you can give those feelings and experiences to your own characters whom you're inventing or borrow them as it were and reuse them in your own writing. So writers, professional writers, such as myself, so you know I've published books and so on, um, we kind of cannibalise our own feelings and we give them to other characters. We cannibalise situations we've been in and give them to our own characters. So I might use something that I've heard from my brothers, for instance, and use that in a piece of writing. So we can write based on um, com uh, complex and paradoxical ideas of ourselves and our own experiences. But of course, another important area for writing is your research. So you can immerse yourself in a topic. Um, a few weeks ago, I was talking to another, um, I think it was an extension English group who were all doing the topic after the bomb. And this topic requires the students to write about um, the post-war, post-World War II and the Cold War period. So we were talking specifically about research because none of those students had themselves lived through that. Um, on the other hand, they knew lots of people who had parents, parents' friends, grandparents, um, perhaps older uncles and aunts. So there they were able to think about immersing themselves in that topic. And there's lots of different ways to do that. Uh, you can draw on other works of fiction, factual documents, images, sounds. Uh, research these days really is very, very easy. Um, I mean, I'm not talking about scholarly research, but in, when you're trying to get into a topic in a general way, such as an era or a geography, you know, perhaps you want to write a story set in a, in, um, a sort of suburb of Sydney you've never been to, or for me it might be, because I'm a Sydney person, um, a country town I'd never been to. I mean, we can use Google Earth, all sorts of things. I'm, I don't need to tell you. You can ask questions of people. You can formally interview family members and friends or just have a casual conversation with them like you know Gran I need to know what it feels like to be really decrepit 
uh, like you. Um, I have an old hag in, in my short story and you're the oldest person I know. Please tell me what it's like. Of course, um, you might want to you know, prepare your questions beforehand. Um, and I've had some great pieces of writing from students where for the first time they went and talked in a kind of prepared and formal way to somebody that they know. People love to talk about themselves. Um, you won't have a problem there. Um, tell them why you're doing it and they'll be glad, glad to talk. Listen to the story. Listen to the, the facts of the story, but also when you're wanting to write creatively and, and of course you've got characters in your creative works, um, we need to listen to the emotions that people are expressing. And they might do this through, when you're talking to them, through gestures, um, their, their, their physical gestures, their tone of voice, the specific words that they use, um, emotive words. Um, it's a lot to pay attention to, but you know, um, you can make an effort there and pick up even a little bit of it and we'll find that, you'll find that helpful. Another strategy is imaginative immersion. We, we all have an imagination. My two kids who are currently in year 12 and uh, 9 um, emphatically tell me that they do not have imaginations anymore uh, but, but I know that they do. Um, it comes out. Allow yourself uh, to create images in your head. Writers use every and any kind of strategy uh, to create imaginative works and so can you. Some of the things that, that I do with my students and which I do for myself or which students have told me they do and which I've borrowed from them in my teaching uh, is to write in fragments. I think we can get really hung up on having to write a complete work because that's what we have to do for, for the final assessment. But there's lots of more light-hearted preparations that you can do. If you're on, a, on your regular bus trip to school, write a little bit of a fragment. You don't have to use it. You don't have to get hung up about it. You don't have to show it to anyone. It doesn't have to be marked. Sentences. You can write a few sentences. You can invent a crazy situation and describe it. Encourage yourself to write imaginatively. It's, it's something that can actually be practiced. It's not something that's given to you um, in utero or by God. Um, it, imagination is something that you can work on, you can practice, you can free up, you can find ways in to um, your imagination that you perhaps didn't know were there. I encourage um, my writing students to draw a map, for instance, it can be a beautiful map, it can be a sketched map, okay, doesn't matter how you want to do it, it's up to you. Might be, you might do it on the computer, you might do it on your phone or on paper. Um, map where characters live. Think about the parts of the map that are a bit um, unknown to you, a bit blurry. What does the suburb look like or their house or what is in their living room or how high is that mountain? Uh, it's entirely up to you to be inventive. Um, of course, if it's um, a fantasy piece that you were writing, you'd want to have a map of the kingdom. Portraits. Sometimes students do um, visual portraits of, of their characters. They write songs. So um, imagination, earlier I said, you know, what do you know? Imagination is another form of, of knowing that, that you can tap into. I've mentioned characters quite a few times. Um, where do characters come from? Well, we're all in love with, fascinated by, excited by the lives of characters on, in film, on television, on YouTube. But that is not a good place to get your characters from because by the time you're working with them, they can be a bit hackneyed and a bit um, third hand. So, you, you know, you want to be inventing your own characters as much as possible. So if we take um, a few steps back to what is knowing, where do characters come from? 
characters come um, from people you know and, and from your own life. You know people by experience, you know um, people and characters by imagining them, you observe and listen, you know by empathy. And again, thinking of that um, golf ball experience uh, of stealing the golf balls from the golf course, experiences, feelings and incidents can be um, again, analogous to other experiences and feelings and incidents. Um, okay, um, conveying and showing characters. Uh, there's a writer who died a couple of hundred years ago, Henry James, but he did say something that um, is still really relevant and important and people think about with, with um, creative writing. So he said um, that character and incident are completely connected. We know people through what they do. And so of course we know our characters also through what they do. Not always what we just say about them. So you might have heard that truism for writing, show, don't tell, don't, don't always state things, but work to show things. So how do we do that? Well, characters' names are really important and uh, you can do so much with a name. You give your character a name that makes sense for the culture you want to convey, the time period. Even if you don't use their surname, decide on, on your character's surname so that, you, so that you feel like you have a real um, sense of ownership of that character. You can also um, include some summary about the character. So it is okay to state some things about where they were born or um, who's in their family or whatever makes sense for, for the piece that you're writing. But the really exciting part and the challenging part comes with the character's actions and gestures, what they do. And of course this has to do with with your storyline, the sequence of events, and the plot, the plot of your story. So the plot and your characters have to kind of join together and make sense. People um, and characters, we do things for a reason. We do them in character. We, we um, feel motivations. And, and sometimes some of the most um, sort of um, intriguing um, questions we have of people uh, why they have done things. So to draw, for instance, on a, on, on, you know, a macabre example is why, in from America, say, why do those teens who go back into their schools and kill their, their, their fellow students, why do they do that? We want to know. We, we, can understand, we, we know what they've done, but we don't get how it is that they did that. We want to know about the motivation. And so, for instance, if I was to write about that, I would be trying to make the link between what they've done and who they are. So that's something that, that um, you need to do when you're writing characters. Another way to um, communicate that is, of course, through what characters say, through their speech and dialogue and the way that somebody says it. Dialogue is pretty tricky, so I always find it a bit of a struggle. So my recommendation is less is more. Try not to use too much dialogue um, because uh, it, it can be one of the hardest um, elements to become um, uh, sort of expert with. Some people have a great ear for dialogue. Um, actually, most of us don't, so it's, it's something we really have to work on. Another way we get to know our, to get to know characters is through what they're thinking to themselves, and there we have the kind of intriguing um, experience because we can have there can be a disjunction between what somebody says and what they're thinking, what they do and what they're thinking, and that can be fun um, to to show that that there's a kind of secrecy sometimes, sometimes or a feeling of privacy, or it could be a feeling of shame. It could be a feeling of self-horror that one has thought this and you're not going to communicate it. But of course, as, as a writer, 
you can convey kind of levels of awareness. There can be um, ca other characters in the room who don't understand your main character's thoughts, but the reader has access to them. Um, that can be one of the pleasures for the reader to see that there's kind of levels of knowingness in a piece of writing. And as the reader, um, we're working to kind of connect all those up together. Another way to convey character is through your other characters' responses or attitudes towards your main character. That list there, it's quite a com you know, there's quite a lot in it, and you might want to unpack that um, at your leisure with with your teacher in, and and go through pieces of writing that you you are writing, and also the um, pieces of writing that you're studying, and look for examples um, of how can your characters, those characters have been conveyed. Um, a big issue for you guys, of course, is that your creative writing is all going to have to be short, but a lot of the things that you're reading are long. So just keep that in mind, um, that there is going to be um, a big difference there uh, for what you're doing. So whether you're writing short stories, prose poems, um, creative nonfiction, all of these are characterised by their brevity, unlike the novels um, or the series of plays that, you're, that you might be reading. There's less words. There are less characters because of that. There may be just one or two key scenes and significant events that carry a lot of meaning. So that's definitely something to think about if you're, if you're working on um, short stories, for instance, to, to think what are the key scenes that I need to, to work with. There's a term that we um, use in when we're talking about creative writing, which is compression. So how do we get compression when, when we're working with short pieces? We get compression through having fewer scenes and characters. We use key metaphors and imagery. So all of you will have been studying metaphor and simile. So one of the useful things with metaphor and simile is that they kind of, you know, it's like the sleeping bag. Um, uh, you know, the metaphor is, is the sleeping bag itself and you're trying to get it into the bag and you compress and you push lots into that metaphor or that simile or that image. So on the one hand, there's a literal level to it. On the other hand, there's a sort of symbolic level. And that can be really useful in, in the short story or, in, of course, in poetry. Another important thing to remember is not everything needs to be told. Readers like to make connections. We like to work things out for ourselves. We don't want to be um, talked down to or have everything explained to us to the nth degree because that becomes a bit boring. Of course, what's really tricky is knowing what to include and what not to include. And that can be helpful. Share your work in draft form, if you've got time, with others. Um, form some little workshop groups. Um, not, not telling everything involves allowing some things to be implied. Again, we're coming back to that, that truism show don't tell. It's okay not to say everything and that of course also is important when you're working with shorter pieces. Another really important element in your writing is to be specific. Sometimes we want to talk about really big feelings, big ideas. We want to reach out for the universal. Well actually the universal and the global and the general are best expressed through things that are specific. So you work down into the details. It's not just um, sort of, you're not just behind the school in my example. Uh, your character is walking through a muddy pool behind the school. You've got a train carriage, it's a shaking train carriage. How, what is the smell of diesel? It's a thick smell, for instance. Um, somebody opens a door, how do they open the door? They're angry, they're in a hurry. They do it with a shove. So there you see, with a shove, might convey the anger that you want the reader to sense about your character. But you don't necessarily have to name that feeling. 
Um, okay, so I've got 10 minutes to go. I've included some writing exercises. Um, there's lots and lots more that I could have included. Um, but these are three that I like a lot and you can use them either just to generate some new ideas or you can use them with things that you're already writing or planning to write. Um, you can do them quickly, you can do them slowly and you can do them more than once for different characters or different pieces that, that you're writing. Um, the first one is about writing a very short narrative. Um, so there, that idea of working with brevity, it's really short. How can you write a short story in 50 to 100 words? Well, it is actually possible. Um, and, and in this exercise, I s sort of hone in on um, using lots of verbs, getting lots of action, because again, action um, helps you show things rather than tell. Um, there's a description exercise. And the third one um, focuses on character. Uh, we don't have time to do them now, but they are great in class writing exercises. You might, I know your teachers have a really busy syllabus, um, but if you can squeeze some time in for them, that, that would be really helpful, I think. Now, I'm hoping that um, some of you have some questions. The essence of the question is, is there anything new in the world to write about? Well, I yeah. think, uh, of course there is. I wouldn't have a problem with you writing those kinds of stories if you can do it in a way where, yeah, you're not borrowing the story from film, TV or YouTube, but where you're drawing on your own imagination, your own experiences, because that will make the story, if, if you're able to do that, and um, use some good narrative writing strategies, your story will be unique, it will be fresh. I mean, I've been teaching for, well, many years, and I have read thousands of pieces, and some of them have included those storylines, and they can, be, they can be good, because you put your own mark on it. Um, you have to take care with it, but yeah, why not? Oh, I have so many favourite books. Favorite books. At the moment, my favourite book is um, by an American writer called uh, Jennifer Egan, and it's called A Visit from the Goon Squad. And the Goon Squad is time, and she she it, it's, it's brilliant. Or another one that I'm reading at the moment, I wouldn't say it's my favourite, but it's by a young Australian writer called Hannah Kent. She went to Iceland, I don't know why, but she did when she was at school for a rotary, uh, on a rotary scholarship. And now she's written this best-selling um, novel based on a true story. Um, and it's just about this young woman in the 1800s who was accused of murdering um, some people. And it's just beautifully written. I think, I like story, I like books that, um, because I'm a writer, that are very technically kind of proficient. But I also love, you know, stories that just have really good, interesting characters. I tend to like contemporary stuff. I like writing, reading about the here and now. I'm not such a historical fiction type person. I think I might do a triple O thing where the students, if I don't answer the question properly, um, lose their connection to triple O and, and slowly bleed to death. But I would, try and make it, I would try and make it somehow plausible because I think plausibility is a really important factor in your writing. Can I talk about the girl-boy the girl relationship story? There, that, 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 that is one that I, that I do read quite a bit or boy girl and you really do have to get under the surface of things you know who said what to whom um, that's only interesting to an extent but getting a sense of who those characters are and why they feel so passionately about something 
Um, you really do need to get in, uh, get down and know your characters well and um, put them in a very real and very specific setting because that will make it far more interesting. I know from the schools that, um, that some of you are in rural areas, don't feel like, you know, a lot of the students feel that only New York stories are interesting. Um, you know, write, write a story set uh, in, your, in your local area. Bring it to life. Um, markers will love to read those kinds of stories. There's not enough Australian stories which are set in real and local environments. I think there's a lot of cultural cringe out there. And these are some of the things that you could bring to that girl boy story that would make it um, individual, unique and help it stand out. Thank you very much and good luck everyone.